Listen, this is the day that the Lord has made. We are on our way to Pentecost. That's where we listen. Oh my God. Today, 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 we are we are going to dig deep. Praise God. I hope you have your books and you have your Bibles. This is the school of Holy Spirit. <laughs> this is the school of Holy Spirit. The nature of deception is where we were uh, putting on the armor of God, making sure that we understand each piece of the armor. The armor of God uh, can defeat every single conceivable strategy that the enemy can use against us. The armor of God, what God has given us, what Christ has given to us in the church in terms of the armor can defeat every single conceivable strategy that the enemy can use against the believer. Paul says, I'm, in, I'm on page 24 and 25 in our book, Holy Spirit, the Bondage Breaker. Holy Spirit, the Bondage Breaker. Thank you, my Dr. Aqua, my pastor. She guides me and leads us. <laughs> Praise God. Pastor Mildred Watson, Jacqueline Ben Hollisworth, Mama Pearl, hey, mother, you stronger than you know. The Holy Ghost got you. He got you, he got your children, he got your husband. Wanda Sue, let's go. Hey, Pastor John Davis, good morning. God bless everybody. Tag and share, like, tag and share. If you would like, tag and share. Uh, and let's let's build up our our audience. Thank you. Camilla has put our book uh, in, the, in the chat. Praise God. And we are so excited for our scribe. She writes wonderful poems. Hey, Joyce Watkins. Hey, man, good to see you as well. So excited for you uh, this morning. As we are moving uh, into our lesson today, make sure, make sure, oh my God, shout out to the Ingrams. Uh, the day is their wedding anniversary. I don't know if she's on today. They might be still celebrating in New York. Amen. 47th wedding anniversary. God bless you, uh, Dr. Jessica and Bishop Gregory Ingram. Praise the Lord. God is doing some amazing things in the body of Christ. School of the Holy Spirit is live. Praise God. We are live and we are moving uh, in this space. Get your Bibles. Hey, Tanny. God bless you. Brother Tanny. Pastor Doug Wilson. God bless you. Thank you for joining. I'm looking at all my pages. My dean, the dean and bishop of us here, uh, Reg Dr. Reginald Charleston. Good morning, Nicole Pettis. God bless you. I've, I've got several pages going, so I can't always see. <laughs> to all the trees, God bless you. We are so excited about what you are doing in Jesus' name. Everybody is greeting. All right, let's get down to our class. Pastor Janine Daly, hallelujah. Uh, Barama Smith, hey, Donald McIntosh, June Scroggins, God bless. Is it Scroggins or Scroggins? I want to make sure I say that right. I'm so excited. Listen, get your books. So this school, Holy Spirit is a, the bondage breaker. Living with the advantage, living with the advantage. If you don't have it, go to the website. And the beauty of spiritual language, because tongues are very, very important in our warfare. Praise God. So you can do that. Now, when we put on the armor of God, it protects us from every conceivable strategy. So let's go there. Uh, Ephesians chapter number six. My Bible is already there. Ephesians chapter number six. And I've been really looking at this. Okay, good morning, my evangelist, Renita Edmund. She is the young lady that is responsible 
for uploading our YouTube content. Hey, Pastor Jannard, welcome. Welcome back. Mary Newton, God bless you. Uh, so I, I am indebted uh, to evangelist Renita, who keeps me on point <laughs> with the technology, with TikTok, with all of those things. And uh, probably somewhere around the end of July, I'm going to go heavy uh, in the TikTok arena, just closing up school, closing up things that we're doing. But um, we're going to start tapping into that with reels and things like that. But now, you know, <laughs> teaching the Holy Spirit may not get a million views like uh, eating, e eating and cooking and those things. But I, I do believe that there's a market out there. I also believe that Clubhouse is another stream uh, that the School of the Holy Spirit needs to go into. So uh, it's Evangelist Renita that keeps me navigating those waters. And baby, you know, I'm grateful and love you to pieces. She's been with me, oh, what? 35 years, 37 years. <laughs> so I'm excited about that. All right, let's go to Ephesians chapter six. A final word, verse 10 from the New Living Translation. Be strong in the Lord. Thank you, uh, Wendy, Elder Wendy. And his mighty power put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. I want us to pick on that. I'm coming with it, and I'm putting the dates together now. <laughs> I love this class. I love y'all. <laughs> work, Bishop. <laughs> work. <laughs> There's work. Work, Bishop. <laughs> I'm on it. Uh, for we are not. Now, I want to deal with this. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. That's his Holy Spirit. Put on God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. Now, watch this. As we begin to look at strongholds, as we begin to look at uh, these things that come against us, you and I are going to understand that parts of our armor were not applied. Jacqueline, thank you. So, Miss Lee, God bless you. Welcome from Atlanta, <laughs> Dr. Patricia James. Mary Milton Spencer. Yes, I'm going to do that. Heading over to, uh, to a Clubhouse. Yes, and so here it is in the message. And that about wraps it up. God is strong and he wants you strong. So take everything that the master has set out for you well-made weapons of the best materials and put them to use so that you will be able to stand up against everything the devil throws you. Good morning to our Zoomers coming in, Elder Barry, uh, Dr. Skillman. God bless you, all of you. I see your iPad. Thank you, Marshall. Thank you, IG. Let's go. Let's go here. Hey, Thomas, I love you over there. Listen to this. So. Um, well-made weapons of the best materials, put them to use. We're going to uh, explore uh, Dr. Valerie Thomas, amen, those hymns. She knows them hymns. That's an old school psalmist and minstrel here in the city of Detroit. Monica Monet, my darling, God bless you. Hey, Dr. Sharon Smith, Glenda Jen Jennings Harrison. It says, uh, God wants you strong. So take everything the master has set out for you. This is the message. Well-made weapons of the best materials and put them to use so that you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. Uh, this is no afternoon athletic contest that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps, a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all of his angels. Good God Almighty, I need you 
to hear this. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you for tagging Kimberly Wissett. Thank you for tagging the psalmists and minstrels of our city. This is a life and death battle. <laughs> this is a life and death battle. A life and death battle that we will not forget in a couple of hours. This is for keeps. Life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all of his angels. Welcome, Pastor Sean Coney. Welcome, my California soldier, Shell Lee. God bless you. I appreciate the, the effort you make every morning, three hours earlier than us, and you don't miss a day. God bless you. And so I think as the, as the body of Christ matures, that maybe we have, maybe we need to have the conversation. My beautiful singing sister, who goes to other people's churches <laughs> and out sings them, Jesus. Ah, another mess that God gets us in. Uh, this is a life or death battle. Can, can we, can we just for a minute pause and just acknowledge that it's very possible that we have not that we have not applied the armor, that we have not really studied and made application of the armor. Some of these strongholds, some of these deceptions and lies, if, if we really are honest, if we really look at it, Pastor Doug Wilson, if we really look at it, would we have some of the challenges, wounds and, and damage and cycles and habits? If we can, we just acknowledge, let's level set today's lesson together is that it's very possible that we did not put enough emphasis on the armor that Christ has given us. Is that possible? Can we acknowledge that? If we can acknowledge that, put yes in the chat. Yes, just yes. Is, is it possible? When we've heard it preached, We've heard it. We've heard lessons on spiritual warfare. We've heard lessons on uh, principalities and powers and rulers. Come on, Dr. Skillman. Is it possible that we have not consistently and um, what's another word that consistently and intentionally paid attention and made we heard it and a lot of says we've even taught it but when we think about our circumstances elder nettie johnson rhonda listen deanna anderson <laughs> y'all gotta see deanna watch this deanna says we walking around here naked is this a conversation that we need to have about putting on the armor of our warfare, putting on the armor and it's, and, and it's God's armor? Uh, listen to this. Have we been careless? You have to, let's, let's, let's talk about it now. Have we been careless? <laughs> Uh, a, a lot of things that we know as the truth of God's word, Dr. Henry, we don't apply. Let's have this conversation. Some of the, 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 the dynamics of deception and the dynamics of strongholds, the dynamics of of these cycles and habits and actions 
and feelings, these patterns, these decisions that we make, the carnality, the 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 rashness, the impatience, uh, the the challenges that we have with making decisions and being godly in all situations. Is it possible, oh God, Rekoshka, that we have been very lackadaisical when it comes, and then we want to pray, and now we we want we want to we want to go into uh, and I, listen, please don't hear me with with any offense to the therapy. And that's not that's not my approach. That's not my heart. But when I know that God has given us the remedies, it does agitate me that we have not been healthier. We have not been sober, more sober. We have not. Been, I'm talking to the saints of the most high God. I'm talking to the people of God that we have not made godly choices in all situations. And 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 here here is where we are. Thank you Anne. I love the transparency here. Uh she said I wish I knew then what I now know regarding strongholds and putting on the whole armor of God. It wasn't taught. I I, I can't say it wasn't taught because we're going to be responsible for the scriptures. And, and and there may not have been like a lot of teaching. I was at a church uh, this past week and uh, I was with my brother um, and my spiritual spiritual brother, my spiritual son, the um, greater Ebenezer family and their, grandfather, their father was my ally in a lot of spaces. And my, my friend, my he was a spiritual, spiritual giant and mentor in our city. Um, and I, I was preaching some of what I'm sharing with you about strongholds, thoughts, and emotions. And God just began to deal with me in this space. I haven't been able to let it go. We're teaching it even on our Bible study, Elder Carter's, because this is where we are. This is where we are. This is where we are. Now, when I got done preaching, several people came up to me and said, years ago, Bishop Murphy, the father, taught six weeks on spiritual, spiritual warfare. And we had to go through the book, Strong Man, What's His Game? I said, wow. And Sasha was there. There's my Sasha. <laughs> and I praise God for you. I, I, I mean, I was I was digging in there, Sasha. I was, I was digging in there. I was really digging in there because I I knew. And 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 so some of what we say we didn't hear, maybe we heard, but we did not take it serious let me tell you what happens what i've seen happen good preaching and great teaching but the but the word of god says the famine is not in great preaching or great teaching but the famine is in the hearing that there's a famine in the hearing i i've been i taught Spiritual warfare, strongman, what's his game to our tribe of women, about 300 women over there. And it's just another lesson. Some of us listen so we can find something to preach or teach. Some of us listen because it's good here. It's good preaching. It's good teaching. You can't really say that it hasn't been taught. But because we are always looking for the next, we're always looking for, so we have itching ears. We have itching ears. And so we, 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 we hear, but what we, but we hear with the idea of hearing what's next, not hearing to apply, not hearing to repent, not hearing 
to be convicted. We here to teach. We here. So, wow, this is great information. I'm going to take it to my church. I'm going to take it to my pastor. I'm going to take it to my, uh, my small group. But we don't hear to repent. We don't hear to change. And we don't hear to do. Ooh, shot. <laughs> Dr. Tracy. <laughs> Real Robinson. Dr. Double Oshkata. We, we, we hear to preach, or we hear to teach, or we hear to take notes, or we hear to share with others, but we don't hear to apply. We don't hear to do. The famine is not in the preaching, and the famine is not in the teaching. The famine is in the hearing. Oh, God. <laughs> Y'all need to hear what I'm saying to you. That, that and and this is what what the word of the Lord has shared with us in the hearing of the word of God. That the famine is in the hearing. That's an old testament scripture over in Amos. I, I think it's somewhere around the eighth chapter. Pastor Dorian, get that for me. Uh hearing the a Amos 8. I believe it is Amos 8. You all can find that for me. It says. That, that the famine that's in the land will not be a famine of food and water. That's that's the word of God. That's the, the refreshing of God. The word, the famine in the natural certainly means food and water. So food scarcity and 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 food poverty is a reality. Uh, but for those of us that are believers, God is saying. That the real famine is going to be of the hearing. You see, when we hear, we hear to do. When we listen, we listen to move on. We listen to teach. We listen to give it away. We, we, we love getting more material. We love taking notes. We love telling people about what we heard. We love, uh, 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 being able to tell people, oh my God, you know, Bishop Vaughn and over there in the school of Holy Spirit, we love that. We and pastors, I don't mind, you know, giving you uh, information, material, so you can teach. That's what I'm doing. I teach, and I commit it to you to teach others. But when do we apply it to do it to change us? We love information. Uh, uh, we love getting more information. Amos 8, uh, 10, 11, and 12. Y'all get that. Go all the way to 13, I think. And so the, 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 the armor of God is not a new teaching. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. The first piece of armor is the belt of truth. The belt of truth. And if we are to be successful in the application of the rest of God's armor, we must be committed to the truth. Now, here's what when I was getting ready early this morning. This is what I heard about how uh, people say now, oh, that's my truth or that's their truth. And even in counseling and clinical applications, we talk to people about their truth. But their truth could be a lie. <laughs> Even though it's their truth. Come on, Angela says, famine is in our hearing. Holy Ghost, forgive us for dumbing down and dulling the voice of the Holy Spirit, for being slow to respond and to obey. Yes, Lord. And look at this. Look at what the word says. It says, God says, Behold, the days are coming that I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, not a famine of thirst for water, but of the hearing of the words of the Lord. And you shall wander from sea to sea, from north to east, running to and fro. That's my truth. <laughs> That's my truth. And, 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 and I'm sticking to it. Oh, my God. You know, as, as a spiritual leader, we watch over people's souls. 
I said, Lord, why you just let us watch over their spirit? He said, I got their spirit. You are the fivefold ministry called to watch over their souls. I said, but do you know how hard it is to deal with people's choices and deal with people's decisions and deal with people's mindsets and deal with people's ideologies and deal with people's philosophies and deal with people's opinions? Do you know? I said, God, what? <laughs> what? I said, he said, watch over their souls. Their choices, their habits, their behaviors, their, their identities. Oh, we don't like that. Uh, watch over that. That's what you watch over. I got their spirit. It's been sealed by, by my spirit. Holy Spirit has that on lock. Nobody can get that. <laughs> but watch over their souls. And I said, God, do you know how hard it is to get a person to change their mind? I said, sometimes it feels like you're in a constant scratching and bite fight, man. And when you challenge somebody's ideas and you challenge somebody's ideologies and you challenge somebody's mind, I was sitting talking to my spiritual daughter and she was sharing some stuff with me. And I said, and I'm, and I'm sharing with her the right but she's going back and forth with me, bless her. And I'm saying, you still stuck on that. That's not the best application for what you're being called to do. Da, 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 da. I said, oh my God, do y'all realize how argumentative you are? Do you realize how much you rebuke the truth? Do you Are you even mindful of how debatable you are? Do, you, do we realize how much we fight to hold on to our truth? Are you aware of how, how, um, how, um, what's the word? How defensive you are about what you think? Do you realize that when the spirit of the Lord is, is, is in, and, and if, particularly if it's your spiritual leader, or particularly if it's a person that you've given access to, to help mentor and develop and teach you, but do you realize that you fight down to the to the last tooth? I mean, we we are not teachable. We, <laughs> ooh, shut up. Rebuke the truth and try to fight to hold on to your truth. Well, you know, my uh, some. Uh, someone hurt me and, and you know, I, they don't love me. And, and this is it. And I say, that's not true. That's not true. Why do you say that? Explain to me where that's coming from. Baby, and uh, it's an argument to get to unravel that lie. Do you, <laughs> Pastors, apostles, prophets, evangelists, and teachers, we need to be paid some kind of special, some kind of special something. Because Watching over people's souls is the hardest job in the world because people's mindsets, people's ideologies, people's philosophies, people's identity is so deeply rooted in deception, so deeply rooted in a lie, so deeply rooted in their own truth and so covered by their own emotions and thought patterns that when truth comes, when a better, when, when I was just sitting, I was like, wow, <laughs> like, okay, I've been doing this for 52 years and I'm telling you, that's not the best application for it. Man, you would have thought I was telling you to take out your eyeball. Do we realize how argumentative we are? Do we realize how, how debatable we are, how agitatable we are? Ask yourself, put it in the chat, in the chat one more time with your name. Am I teachable? See, we want all this revelation from God. We want all this, all this stuff to come from God. But then God, by his spirit, sends the fivefold ministry, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. To perfect the saints, to perfect the saints. Ask yourself the question, put your name there. Am I teachable? 
This may be why you leave off the belt of truth. That that's and, and the belt of truth is the area that covers the belt of truth, covers the vital organs from your waist down, the, your vital organs. The belt of truth all the way to your feet. Am I teachable? I'm telling you, sometimes I, I when I was young in this, <laughs> Pastor Michael Carpenter, you are teachable. In the last 35 years of my shepherding you, you are one of the most teachable pastors, men that I know. And I will give you that today, all day. But some of us are not teachable. I can sit with pastors and sit with them and give them godly counsel and they go right back and rethink it and never do it. And then wonder why they don't get godly outcomes because you're not teachable. You're not teachable. You can't walk with certain people in their life and not be teachable by them. You, We don't discern the body well. We, we think everybody is, is on the same. Somebody said to me, I said, Jesus, we're not teachable. We're not teachable. We think that the person that God puts in our life, we think we're equal. We, we think we can ride with them in the same spaces. We don't recognize how Holy Spirit brings people in our lives to, to bring us into places we've never been. That was the whole business between Elijah and Elisha. Elijah Elijah knew God. He and and the and the journey he had been on, the experiences that he had had. And so Elisha had to go through those four spaces, those four steps, not to learn God, but to learn God the way Elijah knew God. See, we don't want to learn God outside of our own truth. I'm talking to somebody, Pastor John Davis. Hallelujah. He says, I'm teachable. Cheryl McKenzie, am I teachable? We're not teachable. And so we fight and we resist the belt of truth. Watch this. Then the breastplate of righteousness, the book says, is held together by the belt of truth. And notice that the belt of truth is the first piece you have to put on. You have to put on the belt of truth. Well, how do I put on the belt of truth? I'm open to Holy Spirit. He is the spirit of truth. I'm open to hearing and applying scriptures. I'm open to repentance. I'm open, I'm open to humility and, and humbling myself, Dr. Patricia James. Jackson, you are absolutely teachable. It's not anything I whisper in the car, no matter, she's going she gonna to take it and multiply it. Some of us are not teachable. We are argumentative. We are not teachable. Some of us want to present a lot of knowledge that we really don't have. We try to present something. Now, that comes from a lie someplace else. That we want to be seen in a certain way, want to be seen in a certain light, so you can never teach me anything. I already know it telling you, God, am I teachable? My bishop would ask me all the time, Coletta, are you teachable? Sir, I am teachable. And I had to humble myself. I had to come up under the fact that God has put this superior apostle in my life. So that not for me to be friends, not for me to hang out with, but for him to teach me. Do I know God? Yes. But do I know God like him? Obviously not. Am I teachable? Am I teachable? <laughs> Pastor William LeBron, now that's good. Say we walk around sagging like young boys. The belt of truth hanging down. We, we ain't even got our pants on good. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Am I teachable? Now, that's a stronghold. That is a stronghold that the enemy knows that if he can keep you from being teachable, many of us, in the body of Christ, you're not teachable. You don't go to church to learn. You go with you. You don't stand around with your leader to learn. You're trying to have a relationship. You're trying to have some type of intimate relationship. You're trying to be friends or colleagues or or ride and dies. No, am I 
teachable. Am I teaching? Can the Holy Spirit teach me something? When the Holy Spirit tells me about myself, can I receive it without a debate, without a fight? Some of you argue, argue about peanut butter. Hey, you know that peanut butter is not good. Oh, well, I've been right here eating that peanut butter all my life. We, we argue about everything because we're not teachable and we don't have on the belt of truth. Am I teachable? <laughs> and then you say, well, if God tells me, I'll just go in prayer and I'll talk to the Lord about it. Okay. And he sends your answer through a person and you don't receive it. All right, that's because we don't have on the belt of truth. And you cannot live righteous if you don't live in God's truth. You cannot live in your truth. I cannot live in my truth. I have to live in God's truth. So God gives us the spirit of truth to keep us in the truth. Your circumstances today is because of a lie you believed last year. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Oh, we bail you out. We help you out. But until you uncover the lie, until you get to the lie. <laughs> I had somebody come to me the other day and say, oh, Bishop, I got I got some stuff going on. And, you know, my finances is upside down. And I said, hmm. I said, talk to me about five years ago. You know what you mean five years ago? I just got the letter today. No, you got the letter today. Today is the harvest. <laughs> but. Where did you sow the seed? Let's go back to the seed. Were you tithing? Well, not really. I was giving. No, were you tithing? Are you tithing? See, if, listen to me. Lean in. God says that I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And you still didn't tithe. He said that. That's what the word, that's his truth. Well, no, you know, I, I wasn't working and I didn't make the money that I, you know, was making. And, you know, I, you know, I fell off, you know, and then I was working on Sunday. I didn't get to church, you know, like I should. I was making a lot of money. But the, our, he says, bring ye all the tithe and offering in the store. I'm talking to those of you that's fight, fighting financial demons. He said, bring ye all the tithe and the offering into the storehouse and prove me and see will I open the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing. He said, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Now, don't come to me about nothing. Listen, because today is a harvest. But if you want to go back to when you were walking in error, <laughs> you, you don't want to talk about that. You don't want to talk about the five years you didn't die. You don't want to talk about when you had the job. You didn't, you didn't save. You don't want to talk about when you were working and you put, and you put everything on your flesh. You didn't, you didn't make any secured investments in the house of God or in a bank account. See, you want to talk about the harvest that you're reaping now, that you're in the whirlwind. Now you're scared, but you weren't scared when you were stealing from God. He says, I will rebuke the devourer. Ooh, <laughs> see, see the belt of truth. When you're walking in truth, <laughs> that that's one of my favorite favorite scriptures. Let's run over to uh, two John. That's one of my favorite favorite scriptures. Two John, two John. Oh my God! And the apostle, the senior apostle, is talking to the elect lady, and she and he says, you know, I saw your children. I saw your children out and about to the lady chosen of God. And listen, go, go to 2 John 1, to the lady chosen of God, the elect lady, and to her children. This woman had a church in her home.
whom I love in the truth and not I only, but also all who know the truth because of the truth that lives in us and will be in us forever. Grace and mercy and peace. I'm in second John. There's only one chapter. Grace and mercy and peace from God, the father and from Jesus Christ, the father's son who will be with us in truth and love. It has been, it has given me great joy to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as the father has commanded us. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I, I found your children. They were out walking, not listening, not taking notes, but they were walking in the truth. Yeah, Y'all need to hear this. <laughs> we're not walking in the truth. We're not walking in the truth. We're not walking in the truth. Look at verse number uh, four. Say, just as the father has given me great joy. The King James says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. <laughs> that the truth has a permanent residence in us. Not your truth, God's truth, the truth of his word, the truth of his word. <laughs> now we'll go all out of our way. I saw that uh, feed the hungry and clothe the naked and don't tie. You, you can't make this stuff up, folks. <laughs> you, can't, you can't modify truth. And don't tithe. Well, that's my tithe. That's not your tithe. He said, bring the tithe to the storehouse. He didn't say, take the tithe to the hungry. He didn't say, take the tithe to the ones in the prison. He didn't say, send your tithe to those in, 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 the, in the foreign land. That's not what he said. He said, bring the tithe into the storehouse. That there is meat where? In my house. Yes, you you can't you can't modify the truth. <laughs> Woo, Rabbi, I not, see we don't like that. <laughs> he said, and the truth that I have given you that you are diligently watch this. He says, I can't tell you how happy I am to learn that many members of your congregation are diligent in living out the truth. Watch this. You're not going to like this word. Exactly. As commanded by the Father. We don't like that. We want to modify it. <laughs> he said, but permit me a reminder, friends, that this is not a new commandment, but simply a repetition of our original and basic charter that we love one another. And love means following his commandments. And his unifying commandment is that you conduct your lives in love. This is the first thing you heard and nothing has changed. See, that's the bell of truth. That's the bell of truth. The bell of truth would conquer a lot of this error. If we just put it on, we don't put on the belt of truth. Who, who, am, who am I teaching? <laughs> Glenda says, Bishop, you're helping us. It's a tough word, but it's the truth. You can't modify the truth. You can't modify the truth, folks. We want to allocate God's tithe to benefit our own purposes. Good God Almighty, Heaven Owens, Heaven Owens, what you talking about? Whoa, good God for the word in this class. Listen, I'm telling you right now, if I look at a situation of financial uh, uh, complexities and, and dynamics, I'm telling you, I can go right back Show me your tithing record. See, because God ain't a liar. I was talking to some pastors yesterday. I said, pull their tithing records. Every, 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 about twice a year, about three times a year, I pull all the tithing records of my leaders. I pull your tithing record. I sure do. I pull your tithe. I want to see what you tithe. I want to see, are you bringing me into the house? You are elder. You are leader. You're a ministry leader. Are you tithing? Because if you're not tithing, no person 
handling God's money should be a thief. And if you're not a tiger, you should be handling God's money. I'm not talking about you give every now and again. That's not a tithe. That's a tip. That's a tip. I'm talking about a tithe. The reallocate, you reallocate your time to your truth, but not his truth. He said, bring it into the storehouse. See how the belt. Now, so what lie have you believed that would stop you from tithing? Tell me, what lie have you believed that has stopped you from tithing? Ooh, Shata, I want to fix income. Tithe. You want to unfix it? Tithe. You want to get out of the whirlwind, whirlwind of, of bad decisions about money? Tithe. And bring offerings. <laughs> no, we don't want the truth. We don't want truth. And Holy Spirit is the truth teller. But we reject that. We don't tithe. I don't tithe. What do you mean? I forgot. I forgot. How do you forget to tithe? How do you forget to tithe? How do you forget to tithe? God blessed you. God blessed you with money. God blessed you with an opportunity. You were making money and you didn't tithe. It didn't. Your calamity didn't start when you lost your job. Your calamity didn't start when you started getting disability. Your calamity didn't start when, when your business uh, shut down and, and, and had to narrow down. No, when they downsized, you was already in trouble with God. Okay, we don't like this kind of preaching. He said, I, I, I want you to walk in the truth. We don't like this kind of teaching. So what kind of stronghold has taken hold of you that you don't think you should tithe and give offerings. Oh, you're a mighty preacher. You're a mighty psalmist. You're a mighty worship leader. You're a mighty musician, but you don't tithe. I'm teaching so much better than what you are preaching and teaching and living. I'm, I'm, I'm teaching better than you shall. <laughs> Bishop Murphy, the one usually pulled that fear of tithes out of me. I was not going to be an elder ordained through his ministry and not tithe. No, ma'am, Elder Taylor. No, no, you ain't got no business serving God's people and you're not a tither. I ain't talking about a giver. I said a tither. I love that mother Pearl who was watching that movie, Liar, Liar. It's an old good movie. He got to the point where he had to tell the truth. And nothing but the truth if he was going to get out of that jam. Come on, people. You got to tell the truth. Just, Why don't I tithe? Somebody said, well, I forgot my checkbook. I forgot this. I, no, no, no. You're not a tither. That's a problem. You're not a tither. I didn't say you're not a giver. I said you're not a tither. See, the belt of truth will bring conviction of sin. And this is the job that Holy Spirit has in our lives. Some of these emotional hangups, some of these emotional pains and grief and unforgiveness, you would break the spell of it if you would tie. He rebukes the devourer. Some sicknesses and diseases would lift off of your body if you were tithing. We don't like that. We don't like that. <laughs> So this is what we do. I know you're not going to like me today. <laughs> so when the truth comes to us, how do we handle the truth? How do we handle the truth? Let's go back to uh, 2 Timothy for just a moment. Let's go back to the pastoral epistles for just a moment. You got your Bible out? Let's go to 2 Timothy. Oh, Rabbi, I came ready for you today. <laughs> I'm ready every day, but I'm really ready for you today. <laughs> God been dealing with us, dealing with us 
about this. Watch this. Verse 14 said, keep reminding God's people of these things. Warn them before God against quarreling about words, for it is of no value and it only ruins those who listen. Do your best, good God Almighty, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, who correctly handles the word of truth. Wow. Avoid godless chatter because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Now, I do want to read that. I do want to read that 2 Timothy 2.15. I'm a little old school today. <laughs> Study to show yourself approved unto God. I'm in 2 Timothy 2 and 15. 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Somebody said this is the school of the Holy Spirit. 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 Thank you, Elder Barry. Thank you, iPad. Thank you, IG. Put it in the chat, please. School of the Holy Spirit. I'm teaching. I'm teaching. And I, this school of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why? Well, thank you, Mama Pearl. <laughs> Watch this. Study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. He, he, here's what God calls his word. The word of truth. Jesus says, I am the truth. And then he says to us, I'm going to give you the spirit of truth. Now, come on. you got to be cuckoo for Cocoa Pops <laughs> for you not to understand how important truth is. you got to be cuckoo for Cocoa Pops for you not to understand, Mama B, that, that truth is very vital. The, the belt of truth, the word of truth, the savior of truth, and the spirit of truth. You got to know that truth is vital. Truth is talking to us. I'm going to give you the spirit of truth to keep you in the word of truth that honors me. I am the truth. And in your armor, <laughs> come on, Pastor John, in your armor, you must start with the belt of truth. Where have you modified the truth? Wherever you've modified the truth, there's a stronghold. Wherever you have modified the truth, somebody, but Pastor Folsom, put that in the chat. Somebody get that. Wherever you have, tricks are for kids. Come on. Wherever you have modeled, wherever you have modified truth, there's a stronghold. Ooh, Rabbi Kashka. <laughs> June says, the first check I write when he blesses me, no matter what I do in the church, I don't want, come on here, have to spend it on a blowout tire. Don't want to spend it somewhere in the house where you didn't plan on spending. That's, you ain't got to worry because the devourer is all over your money. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I'm telling you, God is showing me some things. This was not in my notes. I can show you my notes. This was not in my notes. But some of you are in financial ruins because you have robbed God it has nothing to do with your income it has nothing to do with your revenue it has nothing to do with your job it has nothing to do with your church it has nothing to do. I pull the tithe on those that work for my church if you don't tithe here you shouldn't work here I pull the tithes on my leaders you should not lead here if you don't tithe here I don't care if you're an usher you should be a tither because you, you, you're not walking in truth. Ooh, Rabbi Anna, I want to ask you this question. Where have you modified the truth in your life? And wherever you have modified the truth in your life, there is a stronghold. There is a deception. There is a lie that you have believed and have exalted above the truth of God's word. <laughs> Woo, 
wherever thank you alicia wherever you have modified the truth there's a stronghold love your enemies i ain't loving them there's a stronghold forgive and don't let the sun go down on your wrath do you know what they did to me i'm never gonna do that okay there's a stronghold submit to those that have rule over you submit to those that oversee your life <laughs> what they, they, they ain't no better than me. I hear from God myself. I go to God in prayer. I go to God in prayer. Okay. There's a stronghold. <laughs> Woo, wherever you have, wherever we modify the truth, there's a stronghold. Husbands, love your wives as Christ has loved the church and wash her and cleanse her and sanctify her. Wives, honor your husbands. Wherever you modify that, there's a stronghold. That a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Not your ministry, your wife. <laughs> there's a stronghold because you modified the truth. Parents, love your children and do not provoke them to wrath. If you're not doing that, You've modified the truth, and there's a stronghold. <laughs> Pay, uh, listen, listen. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, for it is your your reasonable service. If you modify that, there's a stronghold. What is the stronghold? Sickness, disease, doctor visit, all of these things that come up. I modified the truth. I ate after he told me not to eat. I put something in my body for years that I shouldn't have done. Now, what? I reap a harvest. Ooh, Rabba Kashka Tobo Oshka. Ooh, Rabba Baba Sheto Oshka Tababa Sia. Listen to me very carefully. <laughs> he has given us all things for life and godliness. He has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, folks. But we have walked in lies so and deception so, and we have walked in ideologies and philosophies. We have walked in so much. We have walked, we, listen, we are good at modifying the truth. He said, we should not handle the word of God deceitfully, but we do. How many of you have handled the word of God <laughs> deceitfully? Deceitfully. How many of you have, have ever handled the word of God deceitfully? <laughs> we should not handle the word of God deceitfully. But we do. We handle the word. Ooh, rabba, rabba, and that's 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 what that's what the word tells us that the day will come when we will handle the word deceitfully. What does that mean, Bishop? What does that mean? That Second Corinthians four and two. Run over there right quick. I'm gonna get this out. <laughs> I'm gonna get this lesson out. Second Corinthians four and two. Come on, grab your Bibles right quick. Grab your Bibles. Second Corinthians. Four and two. What does it say? What does it say? Second Corinthians four and two. We must renounce. It says now, since God's mercy has given us this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced the secret and shameful ways. Woo, Rabbi Kashkata. Woo, Shande de Kushkata. Come on. Elder the Kiva said, these are vitamins and minerals. Listen to this. We have renounced the secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, here it is again. By setting forth the truth plainly, we can command ourselves to everyone's conscience. We have renounced the hidden things. We don't handle the word of God deceitfully. We don't walk in craftiness. 
We don't have no thank God for the old KJV. Most of us learned it as children in Sunday school. We have, we must renounce the hidden things of dishonesty, not tithing, not bringing your offerings to the storehouse. You're walking in dishonesty. We don't walk in craftiness, deceiving ourselves, but we, but we have the spirit of truth that now must bring order and bring alignment in our lives. We don't walk in craftiness and we don't handle the word of God deceitfully. We don't handle the word of God deceitfully. Some of you sit in this class and have never paid tuition. Some of you sit in this class and you've never paid your five dollars. You've not given one dollar. You're handling the word of God deceitfully because the Bible says that as we give to you our spiritual, you must sow back into us your natural. Some of you sit here week after week and jump off on Friday or don't come on Friday so you don't have to sow five dollars. It's not the amount of money. There's a lie. There's a lie somewhere that you are only a consumer, that you should not be a giver. Show Rabakashka. We're handling the word of God deceitfully. And now we wonder why there's so much warfare. Why are there whirlwinds in our lives? Because we handle the word of God deceitfully. We don't walk in the truth. We don't believe the truth. We modify. We always modify the truth to suit our truth. So we bring in captivity the truth of God to, 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 to our own ideologies, philosophies, and our own error. I'm telling you, it's, it, is, it is a stronghold. It is a stronghold, folks. It is a stronghold. And you'll take notes and you will enjoy the word. And for five dollars, one dollar a day, you won't even give it. So I know you're not tithing. I know you're not supporting your local church. You will get up on Sunday and won't go to church. Kesh Kata Wanda King, I love you, baby. Some of you are just roaming from church to church and in ministries. You say, well, I serve, but you don't sow. You don't tithe. I pull the tithe and record of my intercessors, my prayer team. I don't want you praying for me and you're a thief. You don't, you, don't get, you don't get to stand in the office of an intercessor and you're not a tither. What is wrong with us? We have modified the truth. Now, strongholds, thoughts, emotions, choices, patterns, cycles, bonded. You've made enough money by this time in your life to be a millionaire. You've made, oh, Rabbi, you have, Baba Pearl said, I feel so bad that when I miss a week, I double up. You sure do, mother. Some of you send your checks. I, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the majority of you that don't sow at all. It's a mindset. It's a mindset. And we have modified the truth. And that's your truth. And so what we do is that we modify God's truth. And it brings us into captivity. You got money held up right now. You'll never get it because you, you, you're not a tithe. It will be held up. It will be held up. Some of you have miracles. Some of you have other money. And you won't get it because you're not a tither. You modify just in the area. I was not planning to teach on time today, but this is the Holy Spirit. Even though it's in my notes, I wasn't going to bring it today. But I'm telling you, I see enough financial foolishness. Among the people of God. So now you got to go to the Bitcoins and you got to go to the scratch offs and you got to go to the casino and you're doing everything you can to try to make up for the fact that you're not a tither. Mondo Shakaba. 
Rico Dobo Ushkata. I did it, Oshaya. Am I teachable? Am I teachable? <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Am I teachable? I don't want to hear nothing about Old Testament. No, don't even come to me with that. Please. That's the lie you believe. That's the lie. Well, it was on it was on the old time. It's a lot of stuff written in the old testament. But it wasn't, it, it, it's not that it's no longer appropriate. The tithe belongs to the children of Abraham. Are you a son and daughter of Abraham? Or are you a son and daughter of Moses? If you are a son and daughter of Moses, which was the Mosaic law then we got some problems because scripture says that we all have received the spirit of God that we can become sons and daughters of Abraham. The Abrahamic covenant was the covenant of tithes. The tithe and the offering did not come from Moses. It came from Abraham. It is the Abrahamic covenant. It's in the Old Testament, but we are in the New Testament living out the Abrahamic covenant that God spoke to him and said, you have children, sons and daughters that you cannot even count the stars in the sky or the sands in the sea. You are not under the law. You are under the covenant. And our father of faith is Abraham, not Moses. He is the father of faith. Oh, Nicole, yes, it is. <laughs> ah, God is in. School of the Holy Spirit. You can find it on Facebook. You can find it on YouTube. Y'all need teaching. But then the teaching that you've received, you've rejected it to believe a lie. You're not under the law of Moses. You're under the Abrahamic covenant. It was Abraham that, that gave tithe to Melchizedek. It was Abraham and Jesus, our Savior, the Christ, has come in the order, not of Levi, but of Melchizedek, which is the priest of Jerusalem that Abram tithed to and gave the spoils. You're not under the law. You're under the covenant. Now, you want the spirit of God. You want to be sons of Abraham in the spirit. You want to be sons of Abraham. Now, what is why is that so important? Because Abraham was far wealthier than Moses. Abraham was far wealthier than Moses. Abraham had substance. Abraham had wealth. Abraham had 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 land and 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 he had everything that came with the covenant. It was Abraham that God chose to make the covenant with. He didn't make that covenant with Moses. He made that covenant of wealth and prosperity and well-being with Abraham. And now we are Abraham's seed. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I see I got to teach. <laughs> and you're still fussing about that? No, it's a lie. We are the sons and daughters of Abraham. The Abraham is our father in the faith. And now we have received, glory to God, we have received the spirit of God, which is the spirit of faith to operate in Abraham's covenant. And part of Abraham's covenant is the tithe. He was the first to tithe. He was the first in Old Testament scripture to bring the tithe to Melchizedek. He was the first because he had the covenant. And when he came out of battle and he saw the high priest coming, he stopped and gave tithes. He stopped and brought offerings. That didn't start with Moses. Abraham was far wealthier than Moses. Now, that's the covenant that you and I are under. You're under the Abrahamic covenant which now has transposed itself into the new covenant that was ratified by the blood of Jesus. Ooh, and you all are talking about, oh, uh, 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 <laughs> you're talking about, I can't tithe it. Okay, I'm just telling you right now. When you forget the word of truth, when you forget the word of truth, God said, my covenant is with you. My covenant is with you. When you forget the word of truth, when you violate the word of truth, when you say, we're not tithing, 
I, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing this. Oh my God. When you do that, folks, when you get into the place in your mind where you stop believing the word of God, to Abraham and his seed where the promise is made. He said, not as to seeds as of many, but as of one and to thy seed, which is Christ, Christ, the seed of Abraham. And this I say that the covenant was confirmed before of God in Christ. The law, which was 430 years after cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance was in the law, then it's no longer a promise. But God gave the promise to Abraham. Are you listening to me? You have got to pull down every stronghold. You have got to pull down every lie that is keeping you in a bondage cycle in your finances, in your health, in your relationships. You have got to do it in your identity. You've got to find the lie that you have believed. Lord, how can I find the lie? Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of truth. Show me every lie that I use to modify the truth. In Jesus' name, I got to 